Okay. Um, yeah. So, Vibe, just in case you didn't pick it up, is the new name of the youth club that we're going to be running. So, it's phenomenally exciting what God's going to be doing with us and through us. So, we thought, well, as I was thinking about this message, I was just going, right, God, what do you want me to share about Vibe? Because at the end of the day, we need to know our vibe before we can start teaching others. And what does it mean to have a vibe? And God brought these verses to me. It's from the message version. And it's from Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. And it says, so here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life. You're sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit in without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention to God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings out the best, or God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. In another version, it says, "Don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will." is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Because you see, the thing is about our culture, this world has a pattern to everything. It's got molds that it tries to force you into. Yeah, and these molds and these things basically are to, are to box you in, are to restrict you, are to, are to stop you being who you're meant to be. Because as sons and daughters of God, we're not meant to be boxed in. We're not meant to be limited. We're unlimited in everything. In Galatians 5 verse 1 it said, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. And too often we let ourselves be boxed in. We let ourselves be limited by, oh, I can't do that because. And the thing is, even the Apostle Paul says, you know what, we can do anything, absolutely anything under the sun. Doesn't matter what it is, we can do absolutely anything under the sun because God's plan, God's will is not limited, it's limitless. And that's what we need to do. So as we look about our everyday ordinary lives, do we want to follow the same routines and limit ourselves to the same conversations with the same people every day, talking about what happened on EastEnders or Coronation Street or whatever we watched the night before? But a lot of people live like that. That's the way people survive life. They don't live life, they survive life. Just by going day to day, talking about what they do and what they've done the night before, what they've watched the night before, the latest episode of the latest thing that's out, the latest fad. And that's how a lot of people view life. A lot of people view life and restrict life into this meaningless sequence that's meant to happen and meant to be the same every single day, every single time it happened. It used to be funny. One of my friends, um, mums, used to, um, whenever he landed into the house at whatever time, either in the night or in the morning or whenever, the next morning usually as they're sitting down to breakfast or whenever she got a chance to catch up with him, she was like, so what did you get up to this time? Because our lives were that random and that sporadic that we never knew what we were going to end up doing from night to night. So one night, for instance, we just, um, uh, me and, I, and my girlfriend at the time, we just planned to go out for a meal. And after this meal, we ended up, um, you know, phoning a friend and just they were saying, oh, well, we're going to a fun fair. I was like, oh, I suppose we might as well go there. So we went to this fun fair. So it finished about 10 o'clock. So we were like, right, what are we going to do now? I phoned another friend and he's at a pub quiz. So we went to the pub quiz, you know, stayed there at 11 and then I phoned another friend and he's like, oh, well, I'm at a boxing tournament. So we went down there, joined in there, um, you know, basically had fun at the boxing tournament and at two o'clock that finished. So they all went to a piano bar after that. So we ended up um, staying there at five o'clock and not getting in. And that was, a, well, that was just a good clean night out, just a good sprat, 
sporadic night out, spur of the moment, and then um, we were even offered um, a free hotel, free hotel room, me and my mate, just to go and you know, just go and sleep uh, upstairs for a few hours, and then come down for breakfast. We were offered a lot, you know, and th but this happened regularly because you know we weren't we weren't stuck to a pattern. We weren't saying right, this is what we're going to do, and then that's it. And that's the way we're meant to live our lives with Jesus. We don't go into each day going, I know what plans I've had for today. We go into each day going, God, what's your plans for today? I don't want to be stuck to a pattern. Yes, it's good to have some plans in place, but our plans need to be flexible with the will of God. Because what happens if God gives you something random to do? Like for instance, Smith Wigglesworth. You know, once God told him, go stand in the street corner. He was like, you what? He's like, go stand in the street corner until I tell you otherwise. So he just had to go and stand in the street corner. And he was there for hours before one guy walked along and he says, go tell this man that one thing. So he did. And that was it. That's all God wanted him to do. Go wait, be patient and do what I tell you to do. You know, and that's against, that's against the world's pat patterns. This is why we don't want to do it. So my question and challenge to you is, how does the world try and mold you? Because the thing is, the, mold uh, you know, the molds that are formed, basically, they, they always start with a counterculture thing. So something that's against, so if you look at the life of Hugh Hefner, for instance, he set a complete counterculture to the way the world was. He basically took, um, like, if, 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 he seen, if you've seen the girls going about on the beaches in bikinis in the 50s or 40s or whenever he first launched himself, basically it was scandalous to, for them to be dressed the way they are now. But then it's bit by bit, culture and everything broke down and broke down until now, you're lucky if they're wearing anything, most of the time. You're lucky if anybody's wearing anything. I'm just being, I'm just being honest. That, that's the, that's, but that's the stage our culture's got to. Because, you know, because they used to wear full, basically, dresses into the sea. And they were cover, covering everything, even their ankles. You know, so, and the thing is, he was willing to take a stand for what he believed was good. So if he can do it for the darkness, why can't we do it for the light? Why can't we set a counterculture that stands against the normal until it becomes the normal? Why can't we do that with heaven until heaven's touching earth? And this is, a challenge that, this is a challenge that we have to challenge ourselves to do because as these kids come in, this is what they're going to look to be modeled. They're going to look at a bunch of people who are going to be radically different and not restricted, not boxed in, not set to, uh, this, is the, this is how we do church. This is the box that we follow. This is... You know, this is why this morning, whenever um, we had some prophetic words going around and we had some things like that, it was really nice. It was free flowing. It wasn't set. It wasn't like we sing two songs, we say a prayer, we say another song, then we do communion. You know, that's not the way God works. That's not the way God wants things to work. So God has set us free. In John 8, verses 34 to 36, Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. So the, my question is, what are we sons of? Are we sons of God or are we sons of the devil? Because if you're a son of the devil, if you've given yourself over to the darkness, you're part of the darkness if you've just slipped up and you continually slip up and you're just a slave to it, you're not part of the darkness. It just means you're making mistakes. You're not part of that. But you know what, God, but if the Son sets you free, so if you come to Jesus and ask forgiveness and ask for strength to stand up against the wrong things that happen in your life, he'll give you the freedom. You don't need to be boxed in by the past. You don't need to be boxed in by the things you have done wrong, the things even that you're doing wrong currently. But you know what? God wants you to be free. He wants you to do whatever your heart desires. And this is why our hearts need to follow him. This is why our vibe needs to be about God. This is why we need to be in tune with what God wants for us, and not what we want for ourselves. Because if we know our position in God, it'll bring us freedom wherever we go. It will bring God's freedom wherever we go. And what's our position in God? We're sons and daughters of God. We're adopted into his family when we choose to follow Jesus, when we give our lives over to Jesus and say, sorry for all the wrong things I've done. Forgive me and allow me to follow you. That's as simple as it is. 
In, in 1 John 3, verses 1 and 2, it says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world doesn't know us is that it didn't know him. And that's the thing, as we go out and as we realize our position in God, it's going to confuse the world. They're going to be scared of us. They're actually, they're going, that's why they'll call us names. That's why they'll lash out against us. That's why they'll persecute us because it's totally countercultural. It's totally against what they did. Like Hugh Hefner, just to re raise him again, you know what? He was, oh, the first few years, he was given a really bad rep. He was given a lot of stick. He was ripped to pieces constantly. But he refused to back down. He refused to, and that's in a bad way. You know, that, that's, in a, that's, in a, that's a good example of a bad thing. So are we going to be a good example of a good thing? Because the thing is, the world won't recognize the type of limit, unlimited stuff that we do. We're never meant to be limited in anything that we do, in anything that we are, in anything we're meant to be. Come on. Work. Can you flick it on? Oh, there we go. We're fine. Okay. In Galatians 5, it says, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of your flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit desires what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you... Um, so that you are not to do whatever you want. We're in a battle. It's a constant battle. I was, it was explained to me once that basically you, it's almost like feeding two dogs. You know, so basically whatever dog you feed more is going to win. So if you're, if, you're, if you're trying to be part of the world but part, and part of God, you know what, whatever side you feed more, you're going to give more strength to and it'll either drag you down or make you into the person you're meant to be in God. And that was really challenging for me because sometimes we think it's all right just to dabble. It's all right just to do a little bit. It's okay to compromise in just this bit or this, that bit or anything else, but you're still given strength where there shouldn't be any given. And this is why we need to remember that the flesh basically, in other words, all the worldly stuff, all the stuff that basically isn't God's desire for us, the flesh side of things, is completely contrary to what God wants because the outworking of all that is totally different. We're in a battle, but how do we overcome? It goes on to say, but if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. We aren't restricted by the law. So as you look through the Bible and you look at all the rules in the Old Testament that God gave, you know, so, you know, you know, all the Ten Commandments and the many others, what they tried to do then was the Pharisees and the Sadducees took all them laws, took all the advice that God gave and basically tried to make a lot of rules and regulations and tried to box in some form of, of this is what it's meant to look like. And they were restricted by the law. But the thing is, we can't be restricted by the law. We can't be restricted and we can't make Christianity into some sort of, this is what you do to be a Christian. That's never what God intended it to be. He intended it to be a journey every single day, every single moment and listening to God and walking in freedom with God. And it's by the fruits of people will know who we are because it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. In other words, this is unlimited. There's no limit to any of the quantities of this that you can have. You can have as much love as you allow yourself to have. You can have as much joy as you allow yourself to have. You can have as much peace as you want allow yourself to have. And the list goes on right through to self-control. You can have as much self-control as you allow yourself to have. Because too easy, it's, it's too easy sometimes to not control yourself that little bit, to let yourself go a little bit. And God will give as much as you want, as much as you desire. Because in James, it's uh, in First James, or sorry, not First James, James 1, it says, if you lack anything, ask God and he'll give it to you. This is why we're not meant to be limited. This is why we're not meant to be boxed in. This is why we're changing things on Friday night to show these kids what it means 
to actually live life with Jesus, to live life every day with him, every moment with him, to show them a different type of love, a limitless love, a limitless joy, a limitless peace, and they'll, it'll confuse them something awful until they experience it themselves. Until, you've, until you experienced God and experienced Jesus, I'm sure you thought they're a bunch of crazy people, they're a bunch of randomers, they're a bunch of weirdos. Until you got it for yourself and then you had experience with God that transformed your life and you were like, ah, oh, I get it now. I get it. So why do we try and restrict how much we do this? See, this could be even the pattern that a lot of churches follow, a lot of Christian people follow, because they basically try and make a formula up and say, this is the formula, this is the way it works. You know, I love you, I love you this much, but no further. But patterns don't work in the kingdom of God. I don't know if you've ever tried to do patterns in God's kingdom. So for instance, you pray for somebody and they get healed. You pray for another person the exact same way you prayed for that person, but they don't get healed. Formulas don't work in God's kingdom. This is why we need to be free and following God's lead and following God, how he wants to do things. Because this isn't from God. We're the ones that want to try and make limits, make rules, make regulations. God doesn't. God never has wanted to. Those, thing, uh, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Jesus only done God's will. He says, I only do what I see the Father doing. And that's God's vibe. That's, that's, that's what God wants us to do. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from their flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please their spirit, from their spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap the harvest, reap a harvest if we do not give up. And I don't know about you, but I know this area needs a harvest. This area is ripe for a harvest because it's so lost, it's so confused, and it's actually calling out for something. It just doesn't know what it's calling out for. And this is why we need to change the atmosphere. This is why we need to change what's happening, which brings us back to the verses we start with, started with. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit in without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God and you'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings out the best of you, develops well for maturity in you. Let's pray together. God, thank you for who you are. Thank you, God, that you came so that we didn't have to box ourselves in. We didn't have to agree to a certain shape, a certain mold, a certain way of doing things. God, you are free. And as your children, we should be free and we should be living life in full freedom. God, where we've allowed ourselves to be boxed in, we ask for your forgiveness, God, and free us up, God, from the shackles and from the, the molds and the, the things that have stopped us becoming who we're meant to be. God, if there's anything in our lives, God, that's holding us back and restricting your movement in our lives, God, you're leading in our lives, I pray that you just break it in Jesus' name. And God, give us the strength and the courage to follow you. And may we be unlimited in how much we love people and how much joy that we have in what you've done for us and how much peace and how much forbearance and in all the gifts that you choose to give us, God. May we just be overflowing God with all of them. God, give us strength where we're weak and help us just dance on, dance on the graves of people that try to stop us. Because God, you've called us into 
higher realms. You've called us to just um, dance to your freedom, dance God. You've called us just to sing your freedom song. You've called us just to pray your freedom everywhere we go and just live our lives every single day for you. God, we don't want, we want to put death to death, God, because that's where it belongs. And we want to just put your life in our life and follow you every single moment of it. Help us now in Jesus' name. Amen.